Hello. I'm Gayla Elliott. I'm an art therapist at Camp Lejeune. I work in an, at the Intrepid Spirit Concussion Recovery Center at Lejeune. Um, and that's a place where we treat active duty service members for mild traumatic brain injuries or concussions. I'm really grateful to be part of this exciting weekend full of events to support our veterans. And I'm here to share something about art therapy that I find really fascinating, and I hope you do too. I treat active duty military who've suffered at least one concussion. The service members who are treated in our clinic engage in a program that addresses body, mind, and spirit. U.S. Marines are trained to be tough. Their jobs often require them to ignore their injuries and pain, enabling them to be excellent war fighters. This same toughness can be, unfortunately, a barrier to care. Often, serious injuries go unreported, sometimes for years, as these brave men and women push themselves to maintain a demanding military career. Eventually, this concealing of physical and emotional pain can get to the tipping point, and that's often the critical moment that these people enter our clinic for treatment. You can imagine, after months and sometimes years of denying and minimizing symptoms, our patients can be rather reluctant or unable to verbalize their physical symptoms, much less the accompanying emotions and distress they feel. For many of these service members, art therapy provides a hands-on, non-verbal outlet, making it easier for them to express themselves. Art somehow opens a door to the inner self, expressing visually what has up until this point been concealed and invisible. What I want to share tonight is how one simple drawing can provide opportunity for self-expression for our wounded military service members. Often this one drawing can provide an opportunity for our patients to begin looking inward about how their injuries have actually impacted their lives. This is a disclaimer that is required of, for me to show because I work for the U.S. government and I work for Creative Forces, which is a uh, national endowment for the arts initiative to keep arts in the military. All the drawings you're going to see tonight are tree drawings, pictures of trees that service members have drawn in their initial session with me. Trees have been a powerful, universal symbol throughout human history. In some traditions, trees hold spiritual and mystical power. Many psychologists agree that when a person draws a tree, they're actually symbolizing themselves. Therefore, tree drawings have long been a favorite image for therapists who use art and imagery in their practice. During an initial art therapy session, I tell the patients that drawing can help them relax, reduce stress, express their feelings, and stimulate the creative centers of their brain, which enhances neuroplasticity. Tonight, I want to share with you how these very simple pencil drawings portray complex ideas, communicate profound human experience, and provide guidance for restoring health and well-being of our wounded service members. A simple drawing provides volumes of information about self-perception and how injuries have affected identity. 
Drawings also provide guidance for our staff, helping to tailor individualized treatment programs for them. What a person believes about their current situation is clinically significant. It has a powerful impact on their recovery. All the tree drawings show multiple ideas tonight, illustrating how a person sees their body, their mental and emotional state, their social relationships, and sometimes their spiritual connection. So I'll, I'll comment on just a few of the aspects that we see in each of these drawings. In this slide, we see a dramatic illustration of how a stressful military career has shaped this person, leaving many scars and a twisted trunk. When he finished this drawing, the service member said to me, that's exactly how my back feels right now, after a very serious back injury and a lot of pain. He also commented that he added the grass at the bottom of the picture to show so much support that he receives from his friends and family. So he felt supported and grounded in his family and friends. You'll see that kind of smoky haze around a tree often is representing kind of foggy thinking that traumatic brain injuries often um, create, but also mood, anxiety, and depression. This artist drew his brain injury as a big chunk um, crack in the earth. The impact of his injury affected his cognitive memory and memory and uh, his concentration and memory, which he really needed for his job. So he felt like these, these struggles from his brain injury were really affecting his career and the balance and stability he created in his career. But interestingly, he also had a brain injury that affected the vestibular system in his brain, literally affecting his balance. This service member was only about 38 years old when he drew this picture, but he wanted to show how old he felt after several combat deployments. Just the wear and tear on the body makes these service members feel like they're aging long before they should. He also experienced suicide of his spouse while he was on deployment, which he illustrated with the lightning bolt that goes straight to the heart of the tree. Now, when I see a drawing like this, I worry a little bit about how this tree would actually survive. You've got an old, dried-out tree that's been struck by lightning and is in flames. That's kind of a red flag for me to say, is he going to be okay? And so we can, from a tree like this, we can anticipate some more robust mental health intervention to make sure he's safe. And he actually did admit to having suicide idea, ideation, is what we call it, um, and was smart enough to remo remove all the weapons from his home and ask for more care. Sometimes we call survivors get guilt, moral injury. This picture illustrates grief with rain falling from the sky and water pooling around the base of the tree. It also shows this man's struggle to support his family while working through his own treatment. He felt it was very important to be the head of the household. All those little branches have been broken off. And in those tiny little stubs of branches left, he was still trying to support his wife and his children. Those are all little birds and bird nests on the, on the limbs of the tree. But one of his greatest concerns was working through feelings of survivor guilt, rage and hatred, 
feelings that he believed were sinful in the eyes of God. And in our clinic, we have a chaplain who is prepared to address some of these spiritual issues our service members struggle with. Again, you see this dark, kind of smoky haze in this picture filling up the whole environment. This is a really strong statement of depression. This drawing was created by a female service member who is a Navy nurse. About 14 years ago, she lost an eight-month-old baby to SIDS. And shortly after that, she was deployed and suffered a very significant brain injury. Now it's been more than 10 years later she comes to our clinic because she is having a really hard time functioning as a nurse. What's interesting about this drawing, I think, is that a lot of times an expression of wanting to nurture others is represented by fruit on a tree. And you can see some of the fruit has fallen to the ground and the tree looks really, really depleted. By the time she came to our clinic, she was reaching very deeply into her own resources to just keep working as a nurse and take care of others while she struggled so much with her own, uh, her own troubles, her own struggles. In men, depression can often come out as anger and irritability. And in our culture, we see that as a little bit of a character flaw or just an annoyance. In this picture, the artist was trying to show how he defended himself against other people. He did not want people prying into his personal life or his thoughts and feelings about his injuries. So he drew a thorny vine winding all around his tree to keep people away if you got too close, you were going to get poked. But he also realized after doing this drawing that those same thorns that are keeping other people away were hurting him, increasing his sense of loneliness and isolation. This next slide looks very devastating. And it was for this service member who had some nerve damage, which was affecting his eyesight. And he was really scared that he was going to go blind. And his wife was pregnant at the time. He was afraid that he'd never be able to see his newborn child. And his um, injury affected the nerves in his eye. And if you look at this tree where it's been torn away, it almost looks like little nerve endings. He did add color to those little nerve endings, telling me that that was his hope, that his own neuroplasticity or his ability to recreate some of those neural pathways would one day be restored. He also added those beautiful curved lines underneath the tree, showing his deep sense of spirituality and spiritual energy that he knew was going to sustain him in uh, his life after the military. So sometimes even if it looks like a very devastated picture, there's still some hope and resiliency uh, illustrated in the picture. This next picture is a tree drawn by someone who had very significant PTSD and was really at the end of his rope. He had some brain injuries, obviously, that's why he's in our clinic, but so often along with those brain injuries come real trauma. So you can see in his drawing, the tree looks just fried, burned out, brittle, his brain looks frazzled. He looks like he's floating in space, nothing to ground him or make him feel stable or secure in his life, and a completely empty environment. I tell these guys, draw a picture of a tree that represents you and an environment that looks like your life from your vantage point. 
So you can see how devastated he felt and completely alone. Once they have an initial appointment with me just, just to do the tree drawing and talk a little bit about what brought them to our clinic, our patients can join an art therapy group and continue to develop some skills, maybe um, create some skills that make them much more interested in being an artist. This particular guy really liked to paint. He found it calming and soothing. So this is actually an acrylic painting. And he was going through a very difficult time with his spouse. And every week he would come in talking about how annoyed and irritated and angry he was with his wife. But he wasn't able to express his sadness. And I thought in this picture, once again, he's using a tree as a symbol for himself, but also able to express some of those softer feelings of sadness, longing, emptiness, things that he really didn't want to articulate but was able to express in his painting. So now I'm returning to the very first tree I showed you. It's, it's common in a brain injury clinic for these trees to look cut off at the top or broken branches at the top expressing how they feel broken, their brains are broken, or they're not functioning the way they used to. This man told me that the branches are also cut off because he, feel, he feels like he doesn't have anything to offer the world. He can't produce anything that's useful to the world. Again, you see a very empty environment. He's not grounded or rooted to anything below him. He drew a knot hole in the tree, and I know you probably saw many knot holes or holes in these trees that often represent trauma. This particular uh, patient said that represented a very serious back injury that was continuing, continuing to give him pain. This guy started treatment in our clinic in December of 2017. He was fully engaged in our treatment protocol where he was seen by neurologists, he was seen by sports medicine and physical therapy, we have occupational therapy, we have art therapy, we have spiritual counseling, yoga, meditation. We really try to address the whole person. This particular individual really loved art therapy, so he saw me individually to make more art. He brought his wife in to do some couples art therapy to have them work together. He brought his eight-year-old son to reconnect with his son who had a lot of separation anxiety from his father who was deployed multiple times. Then he joined our music class. So we have a music class in our clinic teaching service members how to play the ukulele and write autobiographical songs about their experiences. Last Friday, this gentleman was in our music class and our other patients and our faculty were helping him put together these lyrics about his healing journey, starting out very lost, feeling scarred, and hopeless, and finally turning that around and feeling better after working so hard in his treatment while engaged in our clinical programming. So after this music class, I see this guy, he's just beaming. He's so proud of the work that he's done. He's so proud that people are singing and playing a song that he just wrote. He never wrote a song before. He never played an instrument before. So I asked him just last Friday, would you draw another tree for me? And this is what he drew. And he told me, on this side of the picture, there's still a very strong wind that is stressful to him. And it's the memories of his past, losses that he experienced in combat, injury that he sustained, 
But look at how rooted this tree is now in a fertile environment. And he told me, I feel like my trunk is now strong enough to withstand that wind and create a barrier so that my future can be full of life. So you see the branches are leafing out, there's grass, and there's a beautiful rose growing on the right side of the page showing hope and resiliency and a very positive future that he was envisioning for himself. It's so gratifying to see that. And in our clinic, we really keep tabs on these guys. They come to their own treatment team meetings. They're very much a part of their own treatment. And they get to give us feedback about what kind of treatments work the best for them and what they want to continue. So my hope with this presentation was to show how art, the arts in the military can be helpful in providing opportunities for our U.S. military service members to express their thoughts, feelings, and beliefs about their injuries while maintaining control, self-respect, and dignity. The tree drawing helps them communicate ideas of which they may only be vaguely aware. The artwork can tr crystallize and illuminate aspects of self that have been hidden or have been difficult to access. As you can see, art is more than just a fun pastime or arts and crafts or a way to to uh, enhance their creativity. Sometimes it's the best way for our military to communicate their rising self-awareness, their ability to share their story in a genuine and authentic way, and their ability to move toward recovery. So I'm very grateful to be able to share that with you. I'm happy that you are all here, and I just want to say thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you.